Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to 31 Days of Halloween. Today we are reviewing My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. I'm going to put this up and we're going to jump right into the review. First off, I like this book. Before I get started, I'm going to preface it with that. I like this book, but I am, I, I am tired of the dissection of the slasher genre. Um, just off the top of my head, we have Scream, we have Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon, we have uh, even Riley Sager's Final Girls, Adam Cesar's The Con Season, all of these books that acknowledge that the slasher genre exists and trying to explain it, trying to elevate it, trying to make something more than it actually is when I feel like it is fine just the way it is. I wanted to put that up front before I start talking about the book um, because I, I want you guys to know that I was interested in this book. I did enjoy this book. I'm only giving it three stars and I'll explain why. Um, but this, is, of course, this is only my opinion. Um, I love Stephen Graham Jones. I have five starred, I think, everything that I have read from him. Mapping the interior is fantastic. The Only Good Indians was fantastic. Uh, it, the list goes on and on. Mongrels, absolutely fantastic. This one is good. It's not as fantastic as... I don't, I don't know that as it could be, but I think I am just tired of people trying to figure out what makes slashers so appealing to everyone or making excuses for them. Uh, not that he does that in this book, but I'm just, I, I don't know. I, I, I've, I've reached peak slasher dissection and I'm, I'm kind of over it. So with all that up front, just letting you know that's how, why I feel the way I feel about the book. Now the book is about Jade. Um, she's a young Native American woman who is in high school, and she is absolutely obsessed with uh, slasher films. In fact, every single chapter ends with a, not term paper, um, with, a, with an essay um, trying to talk her uh, teacher, Mr. Holmes, into why the slasher genre is important. Um, I, for the most part... For I would say probably the first 300 pages, I was bored, unlike I had ever been bored by anything that Stephen Graham Jones had written. Um, the book felt way too long. Um, the setups were way too, uh, not detailed, but they just went on and on and on. Now, the last 100 pages or so, the last bit of the book, um, especially the last, I think it's the last three chapters um, are very long. Um, when compared to the, the chapters in, in the book. Uh, the chapters range around 30, uh, 20 to 30 pages, but then it goes on to like 40 and 60 pages there at the end. Um, I, I became so bored that I looked up the audiobook, which is on Scribe. Um, if you want to check it out, there's a link down there in the doobly-doo. I get a free month. Well, my kids get a free month, and you get a free month. It's whatever, if you haven't signed up for it before. But if you already have the service, it's on Scribe, so you can check it out there. I enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoyed the performance. Um, in fact, I went back after I was done with the audiobook and re, well, not reread, but read the, the last uh, 100 pages just to make sure that it was as good as it was in the audiobook. I know that's funny, but I, I'd, I'd been bored for so, so long. And I was like, is it really as good? That ending really as good as it is? And I would agree that it, it is. Um, so up until that point... I would have given the book about two stars. It's not that nothing happened. It's just that nothing that interested me happened. Um, and I can only, I'm only ever going to be honest with you guys. Um, I'm, a, I'm a Stephen Graham Jones fanboy, but this one just didn't work for me for the most part. Now, once all the action kicked in and we finally got to the, uh, the festival and all that stuff, and once people started dying, I was, I was very happy with that. But oddly enough, just... I, I, I never reviewed Adam Cesar's Clown in a Cornfield because it, it felt like, even though there there is a, a big difference between uh, his book and a lot of other slashers, I just felt like it's the same setup. Um, and that's one of the things that Jones goes over, over a lot in this one, is the setup. Like, it has to be a certain thing. Um, 
before we go any farther, uh, I, I'm, I was struck by something while I read this. Uh, it, it seems to me that the only difference between a thriller and a slasher is that the killer must be masked or deformed or ugly in some way uh, that our, our normalized sense of beauty, uh, whether it be burned or uh, a def deformation or you know, any, any of those things. Um, I'm thinking, of course, Jason. I'm thinking, of course, of, uh, of let's see, Freddy Krueger, that kind of thing. But whenever the thriller genre tries to do something like a slasher, it, well, anytime someone does a, a handsome or pretty character or anything like that, and it, it's not considered a slasher. Uh, now, we do have, uh, the, of course, the 90s where every slasher was hot. You had Scream, I still know what you did last summer, all, all that stuff. But they were masked killers or their faces were hidden. It seems to me that the only difference between a thriller and a slasher you know, with multiple deaths and, you know, the spree, spree killing or serial killing or any of that stuff, is that the slasher, to be a slasher, they have to be ugly or masked. And it struck me at how obvious that was, but I'd never thought of it before. Um, which which really says something about society's normalized beauty standards. Uh, it's like if you are not up to those standards, you are, you, you're scary or you're, you know, you, you, you put people off or whatever. <clears throat> it was even talked about when uh, Octavia Spencer did Ma. It was like the only reason they picked her is because she wasn't naturally beautiful. I think she's a beautiful woman. Um, but it, it just... And it, it was funny because uh, I was talking to people on Twitter about it today. And my friend Nettie uh, mentioned Ma. Um, and mentioned Wolf Creek. And I, I would not... I, Wolf Creek, the, the killer in that one, I would not consider him handsome. But she she brought that up, and Ma, I love her for bringing up Ma because I think Octavia Spencer is a is a beautiful woman. Um, now the, the I guess the the one thing that was brought up a lot was uh, blah, 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 let's see here uh, American American Psycho. Uh, I don't consider that one a slasher film because it doesn't have the well spoilers for American Psycho here. Uh, it doesn't have a body count. Uh, if you haven't seen the film, you're probably wondering what I'm talking about. If you didn't click away from the spoiler, but it just, it just one of the it's one of those things that made me think: is it truly is that truly the only difference? And I'd like you guys to discuss this down there in the doobly doo. Is the only difference between a thriller and a slasher is that the killer is not handsome or beautiful by society's standards, mostly unrealistic standards, but you get what I'm saying. Um, because beauty is in the eye of the beholder and all that stuff. It's subjective, rada, rada, rada. Um, but anyways, back back to the book. Uh, it, that struck me when I was reading this because of all the stuff that Jones goes over in the book, all the things that make a slasher and all the deviations and films that do different things, he never mentioned that one. And that struck me as interesting um, because as I was reading, it struck me that the only difference between these two things... Um, someone mentioned Psycho also. Uh, Anthony Perkins uh, played, uh, of course, Norman Bates. But let me get back to the book. Uh, there, there's a lot of discussion about, you know, uh, elevated horror. And I, in fact, I even mentioned this in my last, uh, in my review of uh, Queen, Queen of Teeth by Haley Piper. Um, I don't like the idea that... Uh, that horror has to be elevated to be good or to be popular or any of these things. I think it, you just have to do something different and something new. And I think that's where this book failed. I've seen this so much, this dissection of the slasher genre, that it just kept going over and over the same things, uh, things that I had seen in other films. In fact, he references, you know, uh, Leslie Vernon. He references Scream. He references all of these things. And sadly... I'm to the point with this where I, I want to call this book the Ready Player One of horror. Um, because much of this book relies on you knowing what he's talking about. Um, it, it's, it relies on your sense of nostalgia. It relies on you pointing at that and go, oh, I know that. Oh, I know that. 
Uh, the writing is leaps and bounds above Ernest Klein. Uh, I will say that Jones's writing is off the charts, as always. Uh, but let's go to my, my, my three things that I look for in every uh, horror novel. That's the character, uh, pacing, and dread. Uh, characters, I only really like Jade. Only really cared to know about her story. Didn't care about any of the side characters, any of the red herrings. I didn't care about any of that. Um, se second would be pacing. Like I said, I was bored for the majority of the book. Um, and the dread, it wasn't dread as much as it was anticipation of something finally happening and coming right on the heels of the only good indians which had something happening it seemed like every single page every single page of that book was interesting to fall back on this one where i was bored for such a extended period of time the ending didn't even even though it was so great it didn't really make up for what came before it so i'm gonna sit at three stars because the writing was fantastic as always with Jones, um, I'm, I'm going to read everything that, that he writes, and no matter how much I loved or hated this one, I didn't hate it. I'm right in the middle. I'm kind of meh. It was a good experience. I never wanted to stop reading. But yeah, that's where I'm at on this one. Uh, I certainly want you guys to answer the question uh, that I posed here in this video and that I posed over on Twitter. Is the only line in the sand between a thriller and a slasher is that it depends on the slasher slasher's beauty either being hidden or them being you know ugly that that, that kind of thing do, do you feel that i'm correct on that i don't know i really want to debate this down there in the doobly-doo um but it, have, have you read my heart is a chainsaw if you have uh let me know your thoughts uh whether or not you loved it hated it or like me you felt meh about it but if you felt any of those things uh, tell me why you felt those things so that we can have a discussion down there in the doobly-doo. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another episode of 30 Days of Halloween. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!